Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video we're going to take a look at creating virtual twilight images inside Photoshop. Okay, so virtual twilight images or converting a day photo to a dusk photo is a popular thing in real estate photography. Agents like them because it makes their listing stand out from the rest, also gives it a bit of a wow factor. It can be borderline cheesy, it's obviously not ideal. Ideally, we would shoot these images at twilight time. Uh, that's more authentic, it looks more authentic, but you know, this is another service that we can provide. Again, it's popular, agents will ask for it. It saves you the trip from having to go out to the house again at night. So, and it's cheaper than, you know, having to make another trip. So it's just another alternative for a twilight photo without actually having to go there and shoot it at twilight. So it's just another good service that we can provide and another avenue for us to make additional revenue. So without further ado, let's jump into Photoshop and check it out. All right, so here we have our photo here in Photoshop. I will put a link to this photo down in the description below in case you want to download this and follow along with this tutorial. All right, so let's dive right in here. So the first thing I want to do here is I'm just going to zoom in to these windows here. And I'm gonna get my polygon lasso tool right here. So with that selected, I'm gonna just select my windows. So I'm going to just go around the windows here, make a selection. All right, now, so I'm gonna hold the shift key and you'll see the little plus icon come up next to the lasso tool there. And that means I could just add more to my selection. So I'm gonna click once. And once you click once, you can let go of shift. You don't need to hold it the whole time. And I'm gonna select this other window here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna continue on here and select the rest of these windows and the doors here. So for here with this uh, bush and stuff, as you can see, it overlaps the window. I'm just gonna go over this here a little bit uh, and then we'll deal with that in a minute. Also, you can see there's a lot of weeds, but uh, you know, it is what it is, <laughs> no big deal. All right, so now that we have all our windows selected, what we wanna do now is make them look like they're lit up from the inside. So we wanna fill them with like a yellowish color. So how we do that is if we go down to the adjustment layer uh, slash fill layer, here and we go to solid color. As you see now, it's all all the windows are white. So we want it like a yellowish orangey color. I like I don't want it to be too over the top saturated, so that's why I'm over here towards the gray a little bit. But uh, something like that is good. So I'm gonna hit OK. So now you'll notice we have a new layer here with the mask, so we can work with this. And what I want to do now is I want to change the blend mode to linear dodge add. All right, so now if you zoom in, you can kind of see, you know, through here and what's going on, but we just want to lower the opacity of this a little bit until it looks right. So I'm just going to zoom back out here and oops. Now I'm just going to take the opacity down on this. Bit around 85. We may adjust that later, but for now that's fine. The other thing we wanna do is with the mask selected here, not, not this, but the mask, you wanna make sure the mask is selected. I'm gonna zoom in here and you can see, you know, these lines are very sharp. <laughs> so what we wanna do is just add some feathering to that. So I'm just gonna bring up the feather, which is under properties here, this properties tab. And if you don't see that, you can go to windows and properties here. So I'm just gonna bring up the feather, which you'll see is just feathering the edge of, you know, this, the uh, yellow here, somewhere around, you know, 1.45. And so now what we want to do, since it's overlapping some of these bushes here, you know, we want to, um, you know, kind of fix some of this up a little bit. So uh, I'm going to make sure I have my mask selected. I want to make sure black is my foreground color and I'm going to select my brush tool, uh, which is B on the keyboard. Uh, just make sure your brush is pretty soft. I want to flow 100%. And really all I need to do here is just go over some of this here and bring back the bush in, in a little bit. This like skinny stuff, I'm not even gonna bother with. When it's zoomed out, it's not gonna be that obvious, so. So now the other thing I wanna do is I'm gonna double click on this layer here, which will bring up layer style. 
I'm gonna add some glow, kind of like it's glowing. Um, you know, the, the light is emanating out from the windows a little bit. So I'm just gonna hit outer glow here. And as you can see, if I click on off the preview, it's just putting like a halo, a bit of a gl outer glow out, like the wind, like lights coming out from inside the house, which is what we're going for here. And you could, of course, you know, with this selector, you can, of course, change the size and the spread. And so that's zero. I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit. So somewhere around there, just so like it has a little bit of a nice emanating light coming around the edge here a little bit. So I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so now we have our windows looking like they're lit up from the inside. So the next thing I wanna do here is I wanna select our background layer. And what I'm gonna do here now is replace the sky so it's more of a sunset slash twilight looking sky, which is what we're going for here. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna go down to sky replacement. And here you'll see we have the ability to select different skies. We want uh, to go down to these sunset skies. These are all default skies that come with Photoshop. So I'm just gonna use one of these because if you're following along with this tutorial, you will have this if you are using a current version of Photoshop. So uh, let's pick one of these. That's okay, it's a little over the top. I like to try to not to be too crazy here. It's easy to get carried away here with this stuff, but uh, I'm gonna pick maybe one of these here. No, that's definitely over the top. All right, that's a nice sky. I'm gonna go with that. I think that's pretty good. So we're gonna pick that sky and I like to have my output to new layers. So I'm just gonna hit okay. So now we have this sky replacement group layer here. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna create a mask here, layer mask. And with the layer mask selected, I'm gonna make sure black is my foreground color. Again, I'm gonna use my brush tool here. I'm just gonna make sure my flow is like low, like four percent and there's just like there's a lot of overlap here on this house here uh, from the sky replacement a little too much so i'm just gonna brush over this as you see it's bringing bringing it back in a little bit more up here around the chimney and stuff i think it's okay all right so now we have our sky in here so that's looking all right and now what we need to deal with here is that the rest of this picture looks like it's in bright sunlight which it kind of was when i took the picture so uh, what we want to do now is I'm just going to select the background layer again just to make sure that we're not going inside this layer. And I want to uh, go to, again, the adjustment layer button here, and I'm going to go to color lookup. And in the properties panel here, you'll see this dialog box here. So I want to go to load 3D LUT, and I'm going to go to, I'm going to, go to night from day, which is exactly what we're doing here. So as you'll see, now it changed everything to sort of a night look here. And you wanna make sure, again, that this is underneath your sky replacement layer and everything and your windows, so it's not affecting those layers. Obviously this is like too intense here, so I'm just gonna go to the opacity. I'm gonna bring the opacity down. Somewhere around there, maybe 60 or so. And again, this creates a layer mask, which is nice. So again, select my brush tool here, which I have already. And again, with my low flow of like 4% and black as my foreground color. Theoretically, you know, maybe some of the light from the windows are kind of spilling out onto the lawn here in the front of the house. And also there's these little lights, if you notice here, um, which we'll deal with in a minute, but uh, these lights here on top of the house, um, we're gonna make those light up too. So I'm gonna take the brush here and just brush on the lawn here, just to make it look like light. this light's spilling onto the lawn. And you can see that's pretty natural and nice looking. With a nice soft brush here, low flow on your brush. And here on the walkway a little bit, coming from the doors. And again, these windows here, just making it look like some of the lights spilling out onto the lawn. And here, uh, these lights, we're gonna light these up too. So I'm gonna just kind of go around here because the light from these lights will definitely be spilling onto the top of these pillars here. So just gonna light them up now. And we're gonna light those lights up in a minute, but. All right, so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna light these lanterns up and you know work on these lights on the house. So how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna to go to uh, make a new layer here. 
and I want to make sure that's above the color lookup layer. So, you know, if you want to rename this, you can call these lights, this layer at least. And then now I just want my brush tool. So I'm going to select a yellowish color again. Yellowy orange, I'm going to go more orange. Something like that. Maybe a little less intense. And now on this new layer, I just want to change this to color dodge. And now I'm going to double click on this layer. And this is very important. You'll see this little selection here, transparency shapes layer. I want to turn that off. The reason for that is you want this light to look like it's coming from inside this uh, inside this lantern. If you don't turn that off, it'll just look like we're painting over top of the lantern, which isn't what we're trying to do here. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in here to this light here. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna create an emanating glow from inside the light. It really looks natural. This is a really cool trick that works really well. All right, so I'm just gonna start painting over this light here and you'll notice it'll just start looking like it's lit up. It's pretty just amazing. It's an amazing little trick. <laughs> So again, with the low flow, you want to make sure you have a low flow. So you're controlling this, you know, you're not just going all out here, all off the, all off the bat. So just paint it until it starts looking like you think it should. So something around that. And then what I like to do is I just make my brush smaller here and see where the bulb is. I'm just going to go over that a lot, almost make it blown out because that's where the light is coming from. So I just want to make it more intense right in the middle here. If you zoom out, this light is looks like it's perfectly lit up. It looks totally natural and realistic. In my opinion, I think this is awesome looking. It's a great little trick. So again, I'm gonna go over to the next one here. Zoom in. Again, brush tool, just paint over this. Again, I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller here and just get Pretty intense in the middle. All right, so now we look like we have our uh, lanterns lit up here, or lights here. Uh, so that looks awesome. Um, the other thing you can do is you can create another layer on top of it. And I'm just gonna change this blend mode to overlay. And I'm gonna make my brush really big. And I just want to make it look like, like there's a little bit of a emanating glow coming out of this light. So I'm just going to, you know, click a little bit over top of it. And here it's hard to notice. This is kind of a subtle thing, but uh, if I turn that layer off, you can see now what I just did. See, it looks like there's just some glow coming out of it from around it, like a halo a little bit. So it's just a little added touch there as well. I want to go, I can rename this too, to maybe like outer glow or something, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. I want to go back to this lights layer now, because now we're going to deal with these lights on the house. So I'm going to zoom way in here to get these little lights here. So same thing here, exactly the same thing as we did with the, those other lights. I'm just going to make my brush small and I'm going to go over these and voila, looks like it's lit up. Amazing. <laughs> Just gonna go down the line here, light all these up. All right, so now those lights on the house are lit up. Maybe I can get even a little bit more intense with these ones here, yeah. So the next thing I want to do here is I want to make it look like the light from these lights are spilling onto the house here a little bit, which it would be. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger here. I'm going to reduce the flow a little bit. I'm going to make it like two. I'll make sure this is like really soft, all the way soft. Zoom out a little bit here. I'm just going to paint sort of down off of this light here underneath. Gonna go kind of do this for each one of these. 
just to give a, a little bit more realistic look here because those lights would be spilling onto the house. So again here, if I turn that off, you can see you know, what we did there. Um, and if it's like too intense or whatever, say like this one here maybe is a little tense, you, you can just create a, a layer mask here. And yeah, with black as my foreground color, if I go back over this a little bit, it'll, it'll subdue it. So, you know, you have that option too. You can have full control over that. All right, so we have all our lights lit up here now. Uh, this is looking pretty good. We're almost there, I would say. I just wanna deal with some of these windows here that are a little too intense. Uh, so I'm just gonna you know, zoom in here and I'm going to go to our windows layer here. That's this. I'm gonna select the layer mask. With black as our foreground color, I'm just gonna uh, increase the size of my brush here and I'm gonna you know, keep my flow at two, that's fine. I'm just gonna go over these windows, just bring them down a little bit intensity it's just too intense these two are just like blaring so they're all a little bit crazy so I was saying you know you can after you do these other adjustments you may want to you know come back and you know adjust some of these things. Of course you can just, you know, globally adjust it with the opacity too. All right, so that's looking better. I think that's pretty good. Uh, the other thing I wanna do here is just make some tweaks to this color lookup layer, which made it from day into night, this color lookup layer here. Make sure my, um, you know, layer mask is selected. And I, I just kind of want to brighten up some areas here a little bit. Some, maybe this path a little bit. I'm just gonna, you know, where the, these pillars, where this light, this light is on, I'm just gonna, you know, this area would be a little bit brighter. I, and I'm brighten up the house just to bring it out a little bit more. So I got a really low flow, so it's not really affecting it too much. I'm just brightening up some of these areas. Um, you know, cause some of this light would probably be spilling down around these pillars and I'm just lightening up the house a little bit just to make it more of the focal point. So just, just blending it a little bit more just to taste here to what I think looks more where I need it to be. So that looks pretty good now. All right, so once you're satisfied with everything, the last thing I wanna do here is I'm just gonna select all these layers and I'm gonna to go to control click and duplicate layers. Yes. So now I have a set of these layers all selected and I'm gonna to go to, I'm gonna control click again and I'm just gonna to go to merge layers. So now I have a copy of all these layers all merged down into one. So I'm gonna just, you know, turn all these off it actually doesn't really matter because this is the top layer anyway, but whatever. Uh, that's just in case, you know, you ever want to go back in here and make any more tweaks. You have the ability to do that. So with this merge layer selected, I want to go to filter and I want to go to camera raw filter. And this is basically just like your, uh, you know, Lightroom dialog box here where you can make edits. So what I want to do here, I want to add warmth to this. add some more contrast just to bring out the dark dark darker colors a little bit you know the blacks and that's already looking much better so you know before as you can see there's a bit of a dull tone here so you know as you can see those adjustments I just made really just made it come back to life a little bit more gave it more pop uh, so that's what I'm kind of trying to do here so the other thing you can do here, this is a little bit of, you know, of an over the top kind of thing. So you can even add a little bit of saturation into it. You know, just really make those colors come out, you know, especially with the sky and everything. This is like, 
it's supposed to be a little over the top, I guess, you know, uh, but you know, be careful because it's a fine line. You could really get overboard with this and make it look ridiculous. Before and after, uh, maybe even like a little exposure, but yeah, somewhere around that neighborhood. I'm just gonna hit okay here. All right, so there you go. That's more or less the process I would do to make this into a virtual twilight. And I'm pretty satisfied with the way this looks and I would just save it now and export it as a JPEG or whatever to deliver to the client. All right guys, so there's my basic process for creating a virtual twilight image for real estate photos. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate the support. Also take a look down in the description of this video. I have a link to sky replacement pack that I've created. Also Photoshop actions and Lightroom presets that I've made. Also, there's a link to my Patreon page, which gives you access to my private Discord group. There's a great group of real estate photographers in there helping each other out. Also, you can message me there directly for any consulting or questions you may have with your own work if you are interested in that sort of thing. So again, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate the support and I'll see you again soon on the next one.